Welcome back to the Real Story Channel. Part 3. Let's start. A few days after Della and Obi, the insane man, underwent a DNA test, the results were revealed. It confirmed that Obi was indeed Fortune's biological father. Following this revelation, Obi made arrangements for him, Della, Fortune, and Ivan to return to their town the next day. Coincidentally, it was also the day of Prince Dan's coronation. While the ceremony was taking place at the palace, a sudden commotion occurred when Obi, Della, Ivan, and Fortune arrived in a taxi. Upon seeing Obi, the king, queen, prince, and others present in the palace began shouting, Ghost! Ghost! They were shocked because they believed Obi was dead. Ivan spoke up, explaining that his sister had saved Obi that midnight. The young man's words left everyone astonished, including the prime minister, who asked for clarification. Obi confirmed the truth, and Della proceeded to narrate the entire sequence of events to the king, from the time she became pregnant for him to the birth of fortune. One of the king's advisors interrupted, expressing disbelief at the revelation. The king requested Della to continue her story, and the queen embraced Obi tightly, showing her affection. Overwhelmed, the king removed his crown and urged Della to continue. Prince Dan started his encouragement, while Obi maintained a fake smile, fixated on him. Della continued her narrative, describing the hardships they faced and the moment when Obi regained his sanity. At this point, the king, who had been unwell and unable to walk properly, rose energetically from his throne and embraced Della, Obi, and Ivan. Everyone, except Prince Dan, felt immense joy. The king inquired about the perpetrator of this abomination in his kingdom, and Obi revealed that it was his brother, then Obi explained how Dan had deceived him at the airport, pretending to answer the king and queen's calls, and orchestrating his disappearance. The king and queen attempted to strangle Dan, but the king's advisors intervened, reminding them of the kingdom's law. The law stated that anyone who attempted or succeeded in killing the king or future king should be burnt or buried alive, regardless of their status. However, the king had the authority to decide the person's fate. Obi was given the power to determine whether Dan should be burned or buried alive. The decision weighed heavily on Obi, and he requested time to think. The prime minister agreed, granting him three days to make the decision. Della expressed concern that three days might be too long, fearing what Dan might do to Obi. She suggested the youth of the kingdom should burn him alive immediately, in accordance with the customs and traditions. However, the king's younger brother advocated for waiting until the designated three-day period. Eventually, it was decided to lock Dan up in the palace cell while awaiting Obi's decision. He would spend three days there. The following day, Prince Obi informed Bob about their return to their hometown. Bob's mother asked why he hadn't come back to the city. Bob replied, Mom, it's a long story. Let me start from the beginning. Bob's mom urged him to reveal the hidden secret he had been keeping from them. Bob confessed, after learning that Della was pregnant with the madman's child, I was deeply hurt and frustrated. So, I went to extreme measures to kill her. Shocked, Bob's mom exclaimed, Bob, what did you just say? Bob explained that Felix had taken him to a river in his great-grandmother's village to seek help from a powerful goddess. The purpose was to kill Della. Bob's mom asked if he had succeeded in killing her, and Bob replied, Yes, mom, I did. Distraught, Bob's mom criticized him for killing an innocent girl and causing her family to return the bride price and take away the gifts he had given her. Bob blamed his friends for leading him astray and revealed that the goddess was now after his life. Bob's mom expressed her disappointment and advised him to confess his actions to Della's family. Bob insisted that the problem wasn't Della, but the vengeful spirit haunting him. Bob agreed with his mother, acknowledging that Della's spirit was indeed following him. Determined to rid himself of the spirit, Bob decided to confess to Della's family. 
On Thursday night, Della requested Obi to discuss something significant regarding his brother, then Obi asked about the topic, and Della mentioned the betrayal and pleaded for Den not to be burned or buried alive. Obi expressed his obligation to uphold the customs and traditions of the kingdom, stating that his brother must face the prescribed punishment. On Saturday morning, the people of Amla Kingdom gathered at the palace for Dan's final day. Dan remained silent as they brought him out of the cell and offered him his last meal, which he rejected. They sent a guard to inform Prince Obi that they were waiting for him. In Obi's room, Della pleaded with him not to kill Dan, but Obi remained resolute. Obi proceeded outside and announced that Dan would be burned alive as the punishment for his crime. The youth of Amla Kingdom took Dan to the market square and carried out the sentence. The next day, Obi was troubled, unable to forget his brother Dan Della became angry with him and temporarily stopped speaking to him. Overwhelmed, Obi contemplated suicide but woke up from a nightmare before taking any action. Della expressed her concern, and Obi assured her that it was just a dream and that his decision remained unchanged. Della approached the queen and king, sharing the details of her dream and seeking their intervention. Therefore, since you have violated the law, it would be unlawful to let you escape the consequences. As the rightful heir to the throne of Omal Kingdom, I hereby declare that Dan shall be burned alive. Youth of Omal Kingdom, take him away and burn him alive. Following this order, Chief M, the king's younger brother, brought 25 liters of fuel and three condemned tires in his car and handed them to the youth for burning Dan alive. They escorted Dan to the market square and set him on fire, burning him alive. The next day, Prince Obi's mind and spirit became deeply troubled. He couldn't shake off the thoughts of his brother Dan, reminiscing about the memories they shared. Della grew extremely angry with Obi and stopped talking to him temporarily. The circumstances overwhelmed Obi, leading him to contemplate suicide. He fetched a rope and attempted to hang himself from a ceiling fan. When Della entered the room and saw him, she screamed in horror. Jesus, she cried, but then realized it was just a dream. Thank God. My love, what happened? Are you okay? Obi asked. My prince, all is not well. I had a terrible nightmare about you and your brother, Della replied. What was the dream about? Obi inquired. Della proceeded to narrate the details of the dream to him. My love, come on. It was just a dream. It won't change my mind. Dan must be burned alive and suffer the same painful death he wanted for me, Obi insisted. Did you just say, just a dream? Della questioned. Yes, just a dream. And it won't alter my decision. Dan must be burned alive, Obi affirmed. My prince, please listen to me. My dreams have always come true. Instead of burning him alive, let's banish him from this kingdom, Della suggested. No, I can't. I can't banish him. The law dictates that anyone who attempts to kill or kills the king or the future king of this kingdom must either be buried or burned alive, regardless of their status. Therefore, my brother must be burned alive this morning, Obi declared. Excuse me, my princess. I need to go to the bathroom, Obi excused himself. Della hurried to the queen's room, where she found the queen engaged in conversation with the king. Good morning, your majesty. Good morning, your highness, Della greeted. Morning, my adorable princess. How are you, the queen replied. I am not fine, Della confessed. What happened, my princess, the queen inquired. Della proceeded to share the details of her dream with them. The king responded, my princess, there is nothing we can do at this point. Nobody is above the law. If I were to use my power and influence as the king to prevent the youth of this kingdom from burning or burying Dan alive, it would mean violating the law, and none of my subjects would then respect the laws of this land. To set a good example for her subjects, Della sadly left the room three hours later. 
Soon, everyone gathered at the palace as they brought Dan out from his cell. His hands and legs were tied, and he was only wearing boxes. Della recognized that this was exactly what she had seen in her dream. Distressed, she rushed to her room, locked herself inside, and began to pray and weep heavily. At that moment, Ono asked Obi to make a decision on whether the youth should bury or burn Dan alive. Suddenly, Dan started asking strange questions, wondering what was happening and why he was nearly naked in front of the people of Amla Kingdom. He questioned Obi and when he had returned. The crowd grumbled in confusion, accusing Dan of pretending not to know what he had done. Obi remained silent, prompting Chief Aiki, the king's younger brother, to speak up. He informed Dan that he had attempted to kill his brother and drove him to madness for almost two years. The youth of the kingdom were waiting for Obi to decide whether Dan should be buried or burned alive. Obi declared that he would never allow his only brother to be burned or buried alive based solely on customs and traditions. Ono warned Obi that violating the law as the heir to the throne would prevent him from becoming the next king of Emila Kingdom. Della stopped praying and crying, coming outside to seek guidance from the queen. She pleaded with the queen to say something. However, the queen expressed her support for her son's decisions, disappointing Della and the others who believed in a different course of action. During their interaction, the chief priest entered the room, and the confused people of the kingdom asked for an explanation. The chief priest revealed that the gods had spoken, declaring Prince Dan innocent. Two years ago, Obi's brother, Amen, cast a spell on Dan after visiting deadly shrines and rivers in an attempt to kill Obi. However, Dan's strong ancestral powers protected him, frustrating Amen's plans. Amen had been controlling Dan both spiritually and physically for the past two years, intending to eliminate the king's family. Emeka, Obi's wife, turned out to be the one who saved the entire king's family through a physical and spiritual battle. This revelation shocked the king, who expressed his disappointment in Amen for his actions. Enraged, Dan grabbed a gun from one of the king's guards, intending to shoot Chief Emi. Obi intervened, urging Dan not to kill him yet and demanded a confession. Amika threatened to kill a man if he didn't confess within the next five seconds. Fearing for his life, a man confessed, acknowledging that everything the chief priest had said was true. He had planned to use Dan to destroy his brother's family and take the throne. In a flashback, it was revealed that two years ago, a man visited a deadly shrine to plot Obi's downfall. The chief priest informed him that there was one solution, making Dan his spiritual slave. Following the priest's instructions, Amen used a charm to command Dan to be his slave, making him obey his every order without hesitation. With this confession, the flashback ended, leaving the situation in the hands of the royal family and the people of Amla Kingdom. A few hours later, Em's wife warmly welcomed him back, saying, Honey, welcome back. Thank you, my future queen. How did it go? Em asked. Em's wife inquired, Honey, that man is truly powerful. I told you he was powerful. Yes, you did. Dan is now my slave, and I will use him to kill all of my brother's family and become king, Em replied. Chief Iman expressed his excitement, saying, Wow, I cannot wait to be the queen of this kingdom. You can say that again, my lovely queen, Em responded. Em's wife then informed him, Your Majesty, your meals are ready. My queen, I know you made my favorite meal, Em said. I did, my king, she replied. The next morning, Prince Dan received a call from Chief Am, who asked him, Hello, Dan, where are you? Good morning, uncle. I am at the palace, Prince Dan replied. Dan, Stop whatever you're doing and come to my house right now, Chief Am commanded. Okay, uncle, I will come when I finish eating, Prince Dan replied. Dan, are you mad? My friend, will you suspend that food and come to my house right now? Chief Am exclaimed. 
Okay, I am on my way, mommy, daddy, I am coming, Prince Dan informed his parents. My prince, where are you rushing to without finishing your breakfast, the queen asked. Mother, my uncle called me for something very significant, so I have to go and meet him now. I will continue with my breakfast when I return, Prince Dan replied as he left. What is wrong with our son, your majesty, the queen questioned. I am just as perplexed as you are, my queen, the king replied. A few moments later, Prince Dan apologized for the delay, saying, I am sorry for the delay, uncle. It's all right, Dan. I need your assistance with something extremely important, Chief A.M. said. What is that, uncle? I am willing to do anything for you, Dan replied. I want to be king. That is amazing. So, what do you want me to do? Dan asked. I would like you to kill your brother, Obi, first as he is returning overseas tomorrow for his coronation, Chief A.M. said. Okay, but this is quite complicated. So, how do I proceed to kill him? Dan asked. Okay, I will send you two boys to assist you in carrying out the task, but you will be responsible for their payment, Chief A.M. explained. Okay, no problem, uncle. Dan, listen to me attentively. Immediately after Obi arrives at the airport tomorrow, go there with the two boys and kidnap him. After you kidnap him, take this substance and give it to those boys to administer to him. Then, they should kidnap him and throw his corpse into a river, Chief A.M. instructed. Consider it done, uncle. You may leave now, Dan replied. Hey, come back here. If you reveal these plans to anyone, I will kill you, Chief A.M. warned. I won't, uncle. I swear with my life, Dan replied, and then left. When I am done with Obi, I will tell Dan to poison the king and accuse the queen of killing the king. After everything, I will kill Dan and become king, Chief A.M. declared. The next day, Obi arrived at the airport and called his brother, Dan, hello, Dan, I have arrived, Obi said. I am coming, brother, Dan replied. After the phone call, Dan rushed to confiscate the king and queen's phones so they wouldn't realize Obi had arrived at the airport. Dan arrived at the airport with the two boys, and Obi asked, why were you answering the queen's and king's calls? The king and queen are attending an important meeting with the governor and senators, Dan lied. Who are these two boys? Obi asked. They are my bodyguards. What about our palace guards? Obi questioned. Brother, we do not have time for all of these questions. It is getting late, so let us go, Dan replied. They drugged Obi the moment he got into the car. Dan instructed the boys, hey, boys, take him away and kill him quietly while everyone is sleeping. And do not forget to throw his corpse into a river. Okay, boss, one of the boys, Scorpion, replied. I will be expecting good news tomorrow. After the flashback, Chief Emini apologized, saying, Your Majesty, please forgive me. It was the devil's handiwork. One more word from you, and I will shoot you right away, Dan threatened. Uncle, how could you be this wicked and heartless? Thank you for watching, see you in part 4. May God bless you.